The Howard Stern Channels present Unmasking the Legend of Bigfoot. I took her down back over there by that crane over there it is, and that's where I went and fucked her. This is Embedded. I'm John Lieberman for Embedded, a series that takes you out of the studio and into the lives of the various compelling characters associated with The Howard Stern Show. Controversial and outspoken, Mark E. Shaw, better known as Bigfoot, firmly planted his larger-than-life size 14 triple E footprint into Stern Show history back in 2006. I'm going to uh, turn my attention now to a gentleman named Bigfoot. I'm 6'4", I weigh 280 pounds. Well, we certainly need a Bigfoot in the uh, whack pack. Over the years, his contentious relationship with his fellow citizens of rural Vermont... Fuck them. I'll go to jail for it before I pay them a hundred fucking dollars. ...his unorthodox sexual conquest... And you're receiving oral right now? Uh, I'm receiving head. ...and bouts with various physical ailments... Yes, I have diarrhea, and then oh. next minute I'm bound up, and then I got a problem headache. What else do you want me to have? ...have solidified Bigfoot's place as a beloved whack packer in the eyes and ears of both Howard and his fans alike. So when I first learned of the gentle giant's blossoming romance with a unique individual named Danielle in his new hometown of Barry, Vermont, I knew that my own terrifying trip to the Green Mountain State wasn't far behind. On today's episode, we focus on how two individual paths converged to form a massive love. Do we walk in this way? Hey, how you there doing? There he is. How yeah. you doing? I'm doing all right. What's happening? You got a haircut. Well, yeah, I got another haircut. Come on in. Thank you. Close the door behind you. You look all different with your hair shaved. Yeah. Your beard shaved. Yeah. Wow. Seriously. Hold on. I'm going to take off my coat, put it over here so we can chat for a little yeah, while. All right. Clean shaven and noticeably lighter, Mark Bigfoot Shaw appeared to be living peacefully on the ground floor of a two-family home. With garbage and defunct kitchen appliances strewn about a kitchen floor covered in a layer of muddy midwinter slush, the house certainly lacked the warmth typically associated with cozy small-town dwellings. But for Bigfoot, his latest residence is a welcome source of stability in a life built on an uneven foundation. And when were you diagnosed with some of the issues that you've been diagnosed with? With schizophrenic and stuff? Mm -hmm. That's been all my life. I've been schizo with this. I'm crazy. So when you were a kid, you went to school, though, and you were okay, right? Uh, no, I was not all right when I used to go to school. That's why they sent me to Mansfield training, because I didn't know my right to my left and stuff like that. And they put me on a little skateboard and tell me to turn right. And if I did it right, they would give me a pre or something. It didn't tell me uh, I was a good boy or something like that. It is. So your parents sent you away to a school? Yes, they did. But his issues haven't been relegated to his mental instability, as Shaw also revealed that a contentious relationship with his now deceased father played a major role in his development. What was your relationship like with your parents? Very rough, very rough. My father always had me constantly doing something for work, constantly. If it weren't picking strawberries, it was running around town and it, uh, cutting wood or mowing lawns or raking lawns or whatever. Did he hit you? Well, yes, he did. Finally, I got sick of it and pulled my fist up at it. I said, Dad, next time you hit me, I'm hitting you. And then he stopped hitting me when I frightened him. Eventually ostracized from his family, young Bigfoot shifted his focus to the American workplace where he tried his gigantic hand in a myriad of odd jobs. Started doing other work like Christmas free work it is, and stuff like that for Walker's Free Farm it is. And then they started talking about brilliant people in the head, sucking blood out of their head and everything during lunch. And then I decided to quit there it is. And I pressed charges on the workers there it is. And I couldn't eat lunch because of the way they were talking. I was a logger, and I, I, uh, I got a culinary arts experience where I was a cook for a while from there, and then I worked for uh, 
the border motel for nine and a half months I did. Doing what? Dishwashing. And then what it is, and then I got done that job it is because uh, the girls were harassing me, showing me their bras it is when they come to bring the dishes down. Yeah. What happened and everything went downhill. In the years that followed, Bigfoot bounced around rural Vermont, including a lengthy stint in a town named Newport, where chaos dominated his day-to-day existence. But now, after more than a year spent here in Barrie, Bigfoot has finally found some inner harmony. What do you like about Barrie, Vermont? What I like about Barry is at least I'm not being bothered every five minutes like why I was being bothered up at Newport I was. Seriously, people bringing rocks to my door and stuff like that. Seriously. Yeah. So nobody, people leave you alone here. Yeah, people leave me alone here, they do. And you have some neighbors. Yes, I have some neighbors. I don't have as many neighbors as I uh, did have in Newport. It is. While tranquility is a vital component to Shaw's newfound happiness, the remote, often snow-covered landscape of Vermont can result in a solitary existence. And just when he needed it most, love came calling. Hi, Danielle. Hi. John Sorry, Lieberman. Like, nice to meet you. Go figure How out. How are I'm you? I'm half naked right now. <laughs> no, go ahead. Get your clothes on. On the next episode of Embedded, we delve into the backstory of Bigfoot's transsexual girlfriend, Danielle Johnston. I heard a squirt it is out, out for... And it wasn't shot. <laughs> it, it wasn't, wasn't shot. either. And visit the exact spot where their love was born. The Howard Stern Channels present Unmasking the Legend of Bigfoot. I took her down back over there by that crane over there it is, and that's where I went and fucked her. This is Embedded. On today's episode, we learn about the backstory of renowned whack packer Mark Bigfoot Shaw's transsexual girlfriend, Danielle Johnston. Originally born Daniel, Danielle Pauline Johnston is a 33-year-old pre-op transsexual from New Hampshire. Like Bigfoot, she too has perpetually felt like an outcast. And at what point did you realize that you didn't want to be... A man. Five years old. I looked in a dirty magazine. It was after me and my best friend um, did some doctor playing. I noticed a woman with a penis, and I was like, oh, my God, that's me. Like, my brain automatically just went there, and just because it was a woman with a penis, because that's how I saw myself. And 11 years later, a high school age Danielle began to take control of her identity. I decided when I was 16 to start changing over a little bit. So I started hanging out with the gay crowd. Um, I was considered the homophobic homo because I would not date a gay man. I I had this thing, I will not have sex with anything girlier than me. And I'm a chick, so you you better be a lumberjack. (laughs) So I had issues. So that's when I was like, you know what, I'm a bitch. There's no way, there's no way around it. Furthermore, while sitting across from her on a heavily stained couch with torn cushions, it became apparent that Danielle's self-described bitchy sexual attitude extends toward factions of the transgender community as well. There's a lot of trannies out there that I just, I don't get it. Like, when did women start sticking their clits up guys' asses? Like, I don't understand that whole she-male part. Like, I'm not into that. Like, I'm a girl. Treat me like a woman. I want to get fucked. While attempting to navigate and come to grips with her sexual identity, Danielle's formative years were rife with abusive relationships and horrific experiences. So you've been raped before, you believe? Oh, many times, actually. Yeah. I've been through hell. Yeah. How how does that change you? I'm stronger. Um, I know it wasn't my fault. Um, Sometimes I get flashbacks. I I mean, I was with a guy. His name, he went by Joker. Um, Very abusive um, to the point where he was trying to kill me for three years. Yet in the midst of standing up for herself in the face of unimaginable cruelty, the mental escape offered by heroin is yet another battle that Bigfoot's girlfriend has tangled with. I've been dealing with drugs my whole life, um, but heroin was the worst. It, it brings me down to, down to the ground, you know, so I've, I've, it makes me feel better. It, it does a whole lot of things. So now I'm at the methadone clinic. 
What made you want to go to the methadone clinic? I started um, doing bad things on my own um, outside, you know, like in the house and stuff. Like I was shooting up. So I was like, enough's enough. You know, I called them and they told me, just do what you're doing now so you don't, you know, so you don't, you know, screw anything up. I don't want you to get sick. So as soon as I got in, they, they dosed me immediately. I was very sick. From this addiction, Danielle's cycle of chaos continued and she was incarcerated after authorities found her lying unconscious on the heels of yet another drug-fueled night. Have you spent any time in prison? Never. I was, oh yeah, wait a minute, no, I was arrested. Um, they put me in for four days in medical, stuck me in the men's ward in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, they had inmates calling me, you know, bad names, a faggot. Um, disgusting things. Um, CEOs there also made me shower in front of everybody that was there. To add to an already bleak situation, a narcotics binge back in October of 2014 left Bigfoot's lady highly intoxicated, only to wake up with a tampon lodged six inches into her rectal cavity and her mind yet again filled with trauma. It was really, really strange. Um, I had drugs in my system that I don't remember doing. Um, but anyways, I wound up like in the um, Osgood 2 unit, which is the gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender unit. It's a fucking vacation. Like, it, it's, it's really nice. They're very sweet people. They're, um, they do make sure that you're okay, and they're very good with um, rehabilitation from drugs. What's the hardest thing about being transgender? <sighs> Meeting guys. It's really difficult really is difficult. There's a lot of freaks out there. Fresh out of a mental hospital in Brattleboro, Danielle settled two hours north in Barrie, looking to stay out of the emotional fire that has seemingly been burning Miss Johnston since her mid-teens. And as fate would have it, a chance meeting led her to find love in the most hopeless of places, outside of a Dunkin' Donuts on Main Street. Here we are, so tell me how this meeting happened. We'll tell you, it used to be a park bench right here by these granite stones and everything. And I was sitting there minding my own business, and Danielle come to me wanting a cigarette and everything, and I was nice enough to give her a cigarette and everything. And that's when, how we met, by offering her a cigarette. Through his generosity, Bigfoot was invited to smoke marijuana at Danielle's nearby apartment. From there, they became fast friends, spending the next month cuddling and watching movies together. A fitting result for a meeting spot where Bigfoot has been lucky before. And this is the same place where you met a prostitute. Oh, yeah. Serious? And where did you take her? I took her down back over there by that praying over there it is. Yeah. Yeah. By the praying it is. And then I went from there over to the community action it is. And that's where I went and fucked her. Right in the outside. Yeah, right on the outside, yeah. I fucked her, I, I, I licked her cunt in, and then I stuck my dick into her in and made massive love to her. So, from a golden bench firmly planted in concrete, a unique love managed to blossom. But don't expect Bigfoot and Danielle to celebrate their upcoming six-month anniversary with coffee and donuts, because, ironically, neither is allowed inside of the establishment. Why were you kicked out initially, Bigfoot? Because I sold sugar packets out of their retainer in the Dunkin' Donut. And why were you? I brought my dog in there. I had paperwork stating that my dog was my prescribed dog. So I brought my dog there. Your dog and you need to leave right now. I said, no, I don't. Like, I have paperwork. My dog's staying with me. Nope, you and your dog need to leave right now. Well, one of the ladies that works there decided to, uh, run her mouth to me. I said, listen, you old cunt. I'm like, don't you ever run your face to me ever again. First of all, I have paperwork on my dog, and you're just a loser bitch that has no fucking dick in your life. Get laid, and maybe you'll be happy. On the next episode of Embedded, we attempt to navigate the sexual terrain of Bigfoot and Danielle's transgender romance. I was in the middle of an orgasm, and I was, I'm fucking growling a little bit, and I looked up, this fucker's laughing at me. I'm like, what were you laughing at? I don't know, the are purring, I guess. The Howard Stern Channels present... 
Unmasking the legend of Bigfoot. I took her down back over there by that crane over there it is, and that's where I went and fucked her. This is Embedded. On today's episode, we attempt to navigate the sexual terrain of a romance between whackpacker Mark Bigfoot Shaw and his transsexual girlfriend, Danielle Johnston. Love and sex are inherently difficult and complicated components to any relationship. But for Bigfoot and Danielle, their unique transgender partnership is a multi-layered one. After a month of platonic hangouts spent smoking marijuana and talking, Bigfoot decided to use his acting role in the film Jersey Shore Massacre to help spark a romance and take their friendship to the next level. So, you come up here. Yeah. And you, you put on your movie, yeah. Mark, on this TV. Right, exactly. And you start watching the movie. Right. My name is Edgar. Would you like to fry some of my sausages? No, thank you, Edgar. Yeah, none of us eat meat. Uh, yeah, we're all veterinarians. All you girls look so pretty and shiny. And what do you think of the movie, Daniel? I actually honestly loved the movie. The fact that, that it's all Jersey Shore. It's what people didn't like about Jersey Shore, those dizzy asses. Clearly impressed by his stardom, Danielle soon found herself swept up in a Hollywood moment by way of a DVD player inside a Barry Vermont living room. When I watched the movie, next thing I know, I'm getting laid in the living room. So is this where it happened? Oh yeah, the first night we had sex was right in here. When you're having sex, what position do you do it in? Uh, usually, um... <laughs> Face down, ass up. <laughs> yeah. In addition to the strong odor of marijuana and cigarette smoke, I was now detecting the scent of raw transgender sex as I sat just inches away from the mattress where they first consummated their love. And like any couple's first time, there are typically some awkward moments. And with Danielle's male genitalia, Bigfoot admits that this extra wrinkle certainly took him by surprise. I didn't know what to think it is. I thought she was just joking with me. It is about her having a penis. It is, and then I felt it, and I said, oh, wow, she's serious. <laughs> <laughs> But once he adjusted to Danielle's anatomy, her man was not only accepting, he was also generous. I've sucked on it a few times. He's tried. I don't really care for it, though. I didn't have to pay him. <laughs> and, and what was that like? It was great. Seriously. And as they continued to become more comfortable making love on their living room mattress, which was covered, by the way, in food wrappers, clothes, and various types of loose debris, Danielle was soon reminded of why we call him Bigfoot. I looked up, and he looked like Santa Claus, and I was in the middle of an orgasm, and I just, I'm fucking growling a little bit, and I looked up, this fucker's laughing at me. I'm like, what were you laughing at? I don't know, the burn, I guess. <laughs> Honey, take a walk on the wild side. Or what? Her. And 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 you say she was so loud the first time that you had relations that it disturbed your neighbors? Yeah. After waking up the neighbors with her purring, Danielle confirmed that her boyfriend not only has a girthy nine and a half inch penis, but that it continues to expand during sex. He's got like this hidden fucking penis that pops through. <laughs> It grows once it's in. How does that work? I don't know. I think it's like that bounce factor, like the pubic bone area, like when you kind of push down more tends to seem, it just, it feels like it's a lot bigger than it normally is. Despite Bigfoot's immense member that can be too much for Danielle to handle at times, the risk is not apparently greater than its reward. Because she likes it so well, I jam it right to her. My my body, like I have female orgasms. They've they've changed and everything. Yeah. I even got her to squirt. It is out, out for, her. yeah, seriously. And it wasn't shut. <laughs> it, it wasn't shut either. It was fluid. Yeah, it was fluid. So as Danielle Johnston continues her transition into womanhood through hormone therapy, that's already helped her begin to grow breasts. 
Her sex drive is clearly driven by the remaining testosterone in her body. Honestly, for a girl, I'm such a dude. Like, guys like sex? No, this bitch is like, out to get some. And as I was about to find out, Danielle, the self-described bitch, was certainly out to get some. Unfortunately, it was from me. You got a six pack too? No, I wish I had a six pack. Oh, I bet you fucking, you bet you got an eight inch fucking stacked fucking rod that makes up for it. <laughs> nice legs, nice arms, a big cock, you're good to go. <laughs> Throughout my entire trip, whether we were sitting down to break bread. You smile a lot. I do. Yeah, you can tell by the, um, oh, yeah, I know. You smile, smile a lot. Man. You're a very happy man. Miss Johnston's advances were unrelenting. I, I honestly think you guys good. just need to, like, stay for the night, get drunk, have a great time. I really think you guys need to be snowed in. We'll go to the house, we'll fill up the tub, we'll get naked and call it, like, the, what is that, the hot tub time machine. So with an insatiable sexual appetite, I wondered why and how Johnston is capable of committing to one man, only to discover that her perpetual desire knows no gender-based boundaries. Like that guy right there? I'd suck his dick all day long. But you'd also lick vagina. Hell, hell yeah. There was, there was this one time where this girl, <laughs> she was riding this guy. I legit <laughs> pulled his dick right out of her fucking twat, started sucking it, licked her twat, and stuck it back in. <laughs> Although shocking, this is simply who Danielle is, and through her continued candor, she was able to succinctly sum up her sexual outlook as we strolled past the quaint storefronts of downtown Barry. I'd rather be on my knees with a dick in my mouth than at home watching the news. <laughs> Later on, it became evident that the happy couple has already started to experiment with other sexual partners. We even had a threesome up here we did. One night. It was very dark, it is, and it was a colored dude, it is, and she, she said she wanted to have a threesome in. I said, go for it. While Bigfoot sounded equipped to handle the emotional components of an open relationship, I feared that the irreversible consequences of sexual promiscuity in the modern era was something unlike jealousy he wouldn't be capable of overcoming in just a few minutes. So you, you're you not a fan of condoms? No, I'm not. I did use a condom when I did that whore uh, for uh, $10, I used a condom. You better have. On the next episode of Embedded, we trudge through the snow-covered roads of Barry, Vermont with Danielle and Bigfoot and learn the not-so-mundane details of their day-to-day -day life. Mark, are you holding your breath? Yes, I am, Mark. I'm in pain. Massive pain. The Howard Stern Channels present Unmasking the Legend of Bigfoot. I took her down back over there by that crane over there it is, and that's where I went and fucked her. This is Embedded. On today's episode, we trudge through the snow-covered roads of Barry, Vermont, to learn the not-so-typical details of WAC Pack member Mark Bigfoot Shaw and his transsexual girlfriend Danielle Johnston's daily life. The start of a love affair is an incredible feeling. It's fresh, exciting, and beautifully unpredictable. But only when the facade of passion fades into the background and is replaced by the tedious routine of everyday life can we really gain insight into the dynamics of a new couple. So we began Bigfoot and Danielle's ordinary day in the most common of places, their living room. So we, 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 we do everything in here. Watch TV, have sex, you know. Everything. The nine yards, yeah. And so I see a curling iron. Yeah, I flatten iron my hair. I put perfume in it and flattened it out and it smells really good. I see some candles. We're bringing apple there's pie. There's a whole bunch of shit. Like, there's like the snow monster, a bunch of condoms, like. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of condoms, some toothpaste. We're ready, <laughs> We're ready for anything. Looking like the lost and found at some sort of bizarre ski lodge, their living room is essentially a cornucopia of garbage, highlighted by a used pair of purple rubber gloves lying on the heavily stained couch and a plastic Cool Whip container half filled with spaghetti, leaving me to wonder what goes on in their disturbingly messy kitchen. Uh, what was that stuff we I make, called? I make nachos a lot. Okay. Yeah. I usually do the cooking. Yeah. Like, what, what else do you make? Oh my God, I made like some awesome like beer battered beef 
stuff like steaks. No. And, uh, and the water right really in your mouth at us. Yeah. It Seriously. Was... Dinner at the Foot Residence sounded like a marinated version of heaven. But as for breakfast, it appeared to be a cluttered ordeal. I had seven percolators in here, and then we were cleaning out the cupboards. Um, he, he's got pressure cookers. I'm like, oh, mushroom cakes. Well, why do you have so many pressure cookers? Because uh, we mushroom make some, uh, some <laughs> awesome meals with beef we do. Even more confusing than their overabundance of appliances were the apparent possessions of unseen roommates. Just off the kitchen, there's a single bedroom belonging to Bigfoot's essential person, or EP, who was noticeably absent for most of my time there. He's here to be my essential person, and he gets paid $407 to take care of me. And what does he do for you? He cleans dishes, he does. He sweeps the floors, he does laundry and stuff like that, he does. And Does he do a good job? Because it doesn't strike me as incredibly clean. No, I mean, we've been rearranging and stuff. That's why we've been, the place is so big of a mess. It was clear to me that Shaw and his lady were attempting to simultaneously sort out the clutter in both their house and their minds. To this end, it was easy, uh, well, relatively easy, to comprehend their need to escape reality with the help of marijuana. <laughs> Sounds better with a bob. I wish I had a bubbler. <laughs> Call that a Colorado tornado. <laughs> <laughs> And with that, they were often toking before noon, quickly burning through the end of a 20 sack before taking me with them on the next leg of their daily journey. With a house that sits atop a remarkably steep winding hill loaded with blind turns, the quarter mile walk down to Main Street is a treacherous one. I'm gonna walk down this way. Oh, uh, well, I don't know if it's safe, but. After dodging trucks and snow plows, Danielle and Bigfoot quickly sank their teeth into a steak bomb, New England's 18-inch version of a Philly cheesesteak. That's a big sub. Yeah, for a big man. Good. A steak bomb was probably not the smartest choice for his notoriously volatile stomach. Meanwhile, Danielle's lunch was interrupted by a phone call from their weed dealer. Yes, honey. Uh, your comment, I can feel it. Hurry up and get it. Five minutes, she'll be here. All right, honey. All right, bye. Well fed and armed with their daily supply, we step back into downtown Barry's sub-10 degree weather. Want to go get your car in and ride around for a few minutes? Why? Smoke. Are you trying to smoke in this vehicle or something? No. Not in a New York car. You don't smoke this after being scolded by his girlfriend, we continued along the messy sidewalks of Main Street, where it became evident that Mount Bigfoot was on the verge of erupting. A lot of gas after you eat. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what did I say? Right after he eats, he's going to fucking fart and burp. <laughs> yeah. With its laid-back vibe and mom-and-pop brand of local businesses, Barry's charm, in contrast to Bigfoot's digestive issues, was undeniable. But with the winter wind kicking up, we eventually sought refuge, ducking into a local coffee shop to thaw out for a bit. Is coffee your favorite drink, Mark? Yes, it is. Mark, are you holding your breath? Yes, I am, because I'm in pain. Massive pain. Well, you did just eat an 18-inch sub. Yeah, I know. Probably I'm digesting that. That's why I'm working so hard is digesting it. But until his local team of doctors get off their collective asses, Danielle's words, not mine, Shaw is stuck resorting to his form of self-medication. The bike then will calm, calm it down, sniff a little bit up my nose. All right? All right. Uh, you just made yourself sound like a wicked drug addict. No, not me. We must be talking about that fringe out back there behind the candy receipt. In addition to her concern for her boyfriend's stomach issues, I also witnessed Danielle's angry confrontational side. Like in this moment, just after a woman in the coffee shop didn't mirror the smile she offered. Smile over there with your coffee. Wow. Beautiful smile. I don't really feel like smiling. No. No. Wretched. 
So how did you meet Mark? Um, I met him through a friend. And, you know, since then we've become good friends and help him out a lot. That's the voice of the man I've been waiting all day to meet. Bigfoot's EP, Adam. Baby-faced with a shaved head, Adam was soft-spoken and reticent, with his speech partially blocked by a bloody wad of gauze in his mouth. What do you do? Um, I pretty much do housework and make sure he's all right, take his medicine and keep himself clean. Does he pay you on time? He does. Every month? Every month. All right, and what's the next big project around the house here? Cleaning it. Yeah, it's kind of messy right now. Yeah, it's very messy right now. He just got teeth removed, too, so I don't want to make him talk too, too much. Oh, okay. I won't make you talk too much. What happened with your teeth? Um, they are rotted. I had to have them pulled. How many? Two. From drinking soda or? Smoking. <laughs> so you learned a lesson there. I did. Did you pain at him? I did. All right, good. Yeah. It appeared that Shaw's essential person had returned from the dentist with some essential painkillers for his ailing stomach. And as the sun set on our day together, all seemed strangely right in the world of Bigfoot. On the next episode of Embedded, they're going camping in the woods and they're going to get married. But I figured it'd be like a Beauty and the Beast wedding since he's like a beast anyway. Yes. An outdoor wedding and other ambitious plans that Bigfoot and Danielle have for their future. The Howard Stern Channels present Unmasking the Legend of Bigfoot. I took her down back over there by that crane over there it is, and that's where I went and fucked her. This is Embedded. On today's episode, we sort out the future plans of notorious whack packer Mark Bigfoot Shaw and his transsexual girlfriend, Danielle Johnston. Whether it's a pair of friends becoming roommates or new lovers attempting to take their relationship to the next level, cohabitation is a tricky process. To put it plainly, living together can certainly expose one's faults, which for Bigfoot include his incredibly powerful gas. It's going to come out one way or another. Yeah, it's going to come out from my ass or it's going to come out from my mouth. If, if he burps, he pushes it out, makes noises, it sounds horrible, definitely Bigfoot. <laughs> and when he farts, he has to push. And when he pushes, bad move. He'll blow your leg off. So is that the hardest thing about sleeping with Mark the gas? Sleeping with the enemy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm the enemy. <laughs> the what? Uh, now I'm the enemy. <laughs> Despite dealing with nighttime farts that are just as terrifying as the early 90s Julia Roberts thriller, I was about to learn that Danielle and Bigfoot appear to be in this for the long haul. I love her just as much as I did the day when I met her. We're very much in love with her. Seriously, she even wrote, wrote her wedding vows and everything else she has. So, tell me about that. He told me that he wanted to marry me, and there's no ring or anything yet. I mean, one day, it's whatever. But I told him, like, you know, this summer, like, why not have, like, go camping? It's cheap. With plans of an outdoor summer wedding already starting to take shape, I wanted to know, what lies at the core of their love? What is the best thing about Danielle? Her looks. Thanks. What about my sense of humor? Well, your sense of humor is nice. <laughs> She giggles at me all the time and when it crack jokes and stuff like this. Seriously. And what is the best part about Mark? He makes me feel safe and secure. That and he lets me be myself. So if I fuck up, I don't I don't need to feel horrible. I just need to talk to him about it and he's understanding. At this point I would have liked to blame my teary eyes on the nonstop cigarette and pot smoke, but at the same time, I wondered if they were ready for such a huge commitment. Is that scary for you? No. I'm looking to summer down it and be a true man to some woman is. I'm a little nervous. This marked the first moment in my time with Danielle that she showed any signs of tentativeness before noting that her feelings were well within the typical female timeline. Usually the talk happens within the four to six month period anyways. I mean, that's a girl's mind. I want to find my my life partner, someone that I can, that understands me completely, that will let me be my outrageous self. Have you already thought about how you might propose? 
I've decided if I'm going to buy her a ring when I can able afford to do it. I was planning on doing it on Valentine's Day. I don't got any money left right now. It is. So let's talk about that. How will you earn money? Like, tell me some different ways you might earn. Um, by selling these movies, Jersey Shore Massacre. I've been selling them. I'm about to pimp them out. Jokes aside, pimping isn't such a far-fetched notion as Shaw claims to have once loaned out Danielle's body for a quick 105 bucks. Recently, he's also attempted to turn his living room into a pawn shop and endorsed a line of Bigfoot brand toasters for a local upstart called Burnt Impressions. But if Danielle had it her way, she'd be cashing in on her unquenchable thirst for sex. Yeah, no, we had done some thinking about getting into the porn industry because I could definitely handle it mentally, emotionally. You mean you or both of you? Um, me and him, but definitely me. I can fuck with days. On paper, her idea actually made sense. Two sexually charged individuals taking their talents to the masses for profit. A short while later, Danielle told me about her past success in porn. Yeah, I was a webcam model. My name was Summer. <laughs> and when was that? Um, two years ago. And uh, my body, I don't have a guy body. I look like a chick. So did you make any money doing it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why did you stop? Um, lack of places to do it. Um, I was actually using my ex-boyfriend's um, mom's house. <laughs> Knowing her protective nature, I was curious to learn what Bigfoot thought of this plan. So she says that she would like to go into the porn business. Would you like to do that with her? Yeah, I would like to do that with her, yes. How do you think that would work? I think it would work out all right. I'm like a stud muffin, I am. And what do you think your role would be? Probably fucking the girls. Shaw's part in the plan sounded, well, remarkably simple. But the longer I thought about Danielle's role, I realized that everything, even doing porn, can be traced back to her one burning desire to be accepted as female. Well, with me, the way I am and not having a lumberjack body and having curves, it works out for me. A lot of guys look at me as a female. They don't look at me as a male. I, I've basically, I've changed. I, I went from male to training to just a woman. No one really looks at me like a man anymore. While she's viewed that way online, here in Barrie, it's been a much tougher reality. There's a lot of people around here that don't like me now, though. Why? Because I have tits and a penis. I'm the devil. But how do they know? Supposedly, everybody's seen it. But I don't remember showing everybody. I've heard it was four inches. I've heard it was 10 inches. I've heard it was six inches. I'm like, my God, you guys need to get it right. Right now, it's really small and it's not your business. <laughs> I mean, I'm on hormones. The fucker doesn't even work. Appearing to have outgrown the ties to her male side, as well as the small town minds that surround her, Johnston desires to move to a more progressive place. Yeah, this town is all right. Better in Newport, it is. I want him to move to Manhattan with me. To New York City? Yeah. I want it out of here. Would you move to New York City? Yeah, if it was a place for me to go to, yeah. I would move to New York, yeah. Make well, it easier you guys to get a hold of me, you would. Well, there's that. There's a lot more to do. I think I have a, uh, there's a better chance for me to make money out there, considering that I'm... you're not I, working right now. No, I'm on Social Security, but I don't consider myself to be a whore either. I mean, I, I, I definitely like being frisky and, and meeting new people, and if things happen, things happen. But I definitely know of ways to make money without having to do naughty things either, so even though I like the naughty part. <laughs> Fittingly, soon after this discussion, I was reminded of their future plans as we passed by a storefront with wedding attire in the window. This is where I saw all the, we saw the wedding stuff, actually. Yeah. That's the tux that we saw, and it was like a red, a red dress. It was really pretty. But Since we're going camping, I don't think that's yeah. going to be appropriate. Mm -hmm. I think I'd look a little fucked up in the woods with that on. But I figured it'd be like a Beauty and the Beast wedding since he's like a beast anyway. Yes. Displaying his beastly side practically on cue, Bigfoot's unconventional charm helped me to realize that the old adage, love conquers all, is absolutely true. 
while nothing about their relationship from their bodies to their living situation to their day-to-day activity is conventional, their undeniable bond has managed to smooth out the bumpy path that led them to each other. And for now, with the rough patches behind them, Bigfoot and Danielle's happiness appears to be all the rage. I'm John Lieberman for Embedded.